Omarosa with a tape and multiple tapes, we're told, of Donald Trump on the heels of Michael uh, Cohen, similarly taping a uh, conversation with Donald Trump. What do you think of all that? I mean, I, it sounds like she did some of this uh, recording in a in a classified or, or secure setting, in a, in a skiff, as we say. You're never supposed to have any type of device in one of those type of rooms. I mean, every time we walk in for any type of briefing, we, we got to check our stuff at the door. So I think that's a problem in and of itself. And the fact that you would just record your, your, the people you work for, I mean, I just, I just find that troublesome. And apparently so does the White House now saying that Amarosa violated a disclosure agreement, non-disclosure agreement, that she can't be doing any of this. Now, legally, where they take it from here, I have no idea, but I bet my next guest to Wall Street Journal editorial board member, Cracker Jack writer, former speech writer, Bill McGurn, Fox News contributor Lisa Booth as well. Uh, Lisa, um, Hi, Neil. legally, legally, uh, can they go after her? Well, I guess they're trying to. I mean, I'm certainly not a lawyer here, but from a PR perspective, look, I think Dana Perino kind of hit the nail on the head with her op-ed of basically saying that Omarosa's book's going to be forgotten, but her behavior won't. And so I think she's ultimately hurt herself the most here because what does she do after this point? I don't uh, think she her has going to be forgotten. I, well, I don't think that her book. I mean, I don't think her book is even doing that well from from what I've read. And also, where does she go here from here from a professional standpoint? In the sense, you I look see. at the way she's conducting herself in some of these media. She's clearly not making any friends Did you in that hear what arena. What the president said about her? Though? I would not necessarily tell, I would not advise him to call okay. her that, Neil. I probably was not the best thing to say. But I also think that I mean, it is. I've heard Bill say worse. But, but, it, yeah. but it is but an effective you, so. strategy to try to go after her credibility, right. which I don't think is that hard to do because you even have the, me the media questioning her credibility as well. But Bill, what do you think? I, I agree. Look, I, who would hire a person like this who's on record as taping? you know, uh, her boss and so forth. And to do it in the situation, the idea when I was in the White House that anyone would, one, bring in a recording device, a phone. We all had to check our Blackberries. It was Blackberry age at the door. And to record the chief of staff in the situation room, I, I just think it's astounding. So I, it, I know that was protocol here, but I believe Michael Cohen did the same thing back, you know, uh, taping. Well, the situation room's a little bit different. As, as the first thing said, it's but a classified weird. area. Why would you do it? Uh, well, you do it maybe because you were wanting to write a book. Uh, then again, I, I agree with all the um, dismissals of Amoroso as what kind of person is, but the president picked her. And she, the, the real scandal is not that she got fired, but that she was ever hired. But the hired. way she prefaced it by saying, well, I knew, you know, and seeing what's been going on around me, I'm paraphrasing here, um, I might want to have a tape record of this. No, I think that she is out for Omarosa is out for Omarosa, which is why she did this but in the she's first not place. The only one, she, though. I mean, I mean, where is the loyalty here in this White House? Well, you know, again, I think it goes back to Bill's point that President Trump should have never hired her in the first place. You have well, to be careful. I, I could, there's a cavalcade of characters you could similarly say. So, well, what? what well, what's yeah, going on? and I would probably say the same about them. I don't think there has been, you know, necessarily right. the great, the best judgment in some of the individuals the president has surrounded himself with. Now, I think General Kelly has made a lot of positive changes as chief of staff and you know those decision making is probably a little bit different now but originally i think president trump didn't necessarily surround himself with necessarily all the best and people, i understand as evidence by has, this no, no, whole thing going on right. i understand that so i'm not here to disparage anyone but i am wondering bill and you mentioned from your white house experience where you know you had to bring your phones in but i thought in the situation room which is a little bit different than being right. in the front hallway right. um that alarms or something would go that's why I, I was surprised that they don't have the capacity to know that you're violating the policy and so forth, which is interesting to me. I always assumed that they had some way to detect it if you weren't well, there. But they're very, I mean, uh, a classified setting is a very um, Like in all the James things. Bond movies, Q is there with a device. Well, you know, when you, when you travel with the president, um, again, you yeah. open with this idea of the skiff, the secure location. Right. You know, the staff secretary has a hotel room, and he has these blue tarps all over. And I used to do a lot of adjustments to speeches under this is blue right? tarp, and it's designed to keep people from fighting. It's, it's just a very, very serious thing. And if you can't guarantee the security of a skiff, um, you know, what can you guarantee? Yeah, well, they should right. probably look at making changes to that, you would think, after all. I, I would think there probably hope, are going yeah. to be uh, changes now. It is striking to me that I, I think President Trump has picked some enormously talented people sure. like Larry Kudlow, um, John Bolton, Mike Pompeo, um, even Scott Pruitt for what he did at EPA. Right. He did what he was told I, I think uh, he's had some extraordinary picks, but he's also had a lot of people that couldn't put in a year 
in a, but in a work environment. here's what I want to say. I don't want to hear from the never Trumpers. I'm going to hate the guy. So, 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 get this out there. Do you think the fact that the president has disparaged uh, Jeff Sessions, whether the guy deserves it or not, or said the same, you know, about his former secretary uh, 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 of state, and, and does so so publicly? You can go to Mitch McConnell. You can talk about frustration, and all justified frustration. I'm not saying that. Right. You say, well, you're not going to be loyal to me, Mr. President. When I get the opportunity, I'm going to return the favor. Well, I think it would impact, you know, even just the hiring process in the sense that you might have some, you know, really talented, smart individuals that would be hesitant to potentially go into this administration looking at those examples. But, you know, to Bill's point, because I know I criticize some of the people he surrounded himself with, he has also surrounded himself with, you know, a lot of great people. Absolutely. But, Absolutely. It, but I think this is an exercise and evidence that it is important who you surround yourself with <laughs> uh, in you hiring people. a lot of those people, I'm talking about the president here. Uh, are you really going to be surprised if and when they're given the opportunity they don't return the favor? Well, I, I think this situation is a little different in the sense of from a, so. from a PR perspective, it is advantageous for the White House to go out there and look at the way that she mistreated the White House, even with her wedding photos and right. things of that nature. So I think it is well, advantageous. Well, did that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's advantageous for, for the White House to get out there and to discredit her and her credibility, which I don't think is that hard to do well, because I don't think do she really had much well, to begin with. Well, they got to do something now, though, right? I, I, mean, I, and I agree with your larger point. Look, I think the president has made some tremendous picks, but I don't know of the management book that says you trash your employees like Jeff Sessions uh, in public, that that's going to get the best out of them. And also, look, a lot of people are biding their time in the White House. And then when they're free of the White House, they're free to write whatever they You're want. Right. Now, in, in her case, she seems to have had a non-disclosure agreement. But uh, Did as you, you see, something like that? No, I didn't, I didn't have any of that. And I, I think you could say of the Bush, you can, a lot of criticisms of the Bush administration, but I think people were, my colleagues were fairly loyal to each other and to the president. There were some exceptions. There's always someone in there. Um, so I do agree with you. I but don't think it's a you're not wired that way. I'm not blowing you. So you're right. not wired that some people are. No. Yeah, well, it's but look, you pay a big price for it. You know, yeah, you I do. mean, the president can fight back now, but and he could have had this non -disc But the information, whether it's true or not, is now out there and they have to deal with it. So uh, it, it's a tough, you know, yeah. again, he hired her. You know, the no, scandal right. is not you're, no, you're that she got right. fired. The scandal yeah. is that she ever had a, an important job in the White but House. Yeah. Real quick, regarding the NDA, I also think President Trump clearly came from a different world entering into politics than most politicians. Right. So it's not necessarily a standard operating procedure on campaigns. Maybe it will be moving forward. Very Maybe that's point. something in to business, think about. Very common. But right. business coming from the media world, this world of celebrity, I think it was yeah. a completely different scenario. And that was the lens in which she was looking from. So I don't necessarily blame him for making people sign an NDA. All right, could you say that a little louder so I can record that? <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, thank you all very, very much.